have no idea. One of the things I would have never thought about is when you're buying a stove, pick one that uh, stays clean. This stove is just every time you cook, it's filthy afterwards. You wipe it down and you just gotta really work at it. Other than that, it's a good little stove, but look, it's terrible. I recently found this out, didn't know it. I was watching a cooking show. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. I didn't hit it hard enough. It's like Chuck Wagon Cooking or something like that. It's in the Texas Panhandle. Guy just smashed his garlic and all the peelings came off. I had no clue. Now this one, let me change the camera angle a little bit so you can see. This one I kind of did on my own. Most people, when they put garlic, put it in, smash it one time, mince your garlic, and then they take it and throw it away. Now watch. All I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is push this down, put it like this, and watch what happens. Quite a bit of garlic comes out. Now, I'm going to do it again. See? Push it down. Now, you wouldn't think there would be any garlic left. Let's see. It's not a lot, but look, quite a bit. Here we have fresh ginger. This came out of the garden. Actually, container garden. My mom grows these. Ginger is extremely easy to grow here. I have this ginger that I tried to mince that didn't really work. Now, if you notice, I'm not cutting it up real great. I'll show you why later. Now, speaking of health, garlic. Did you know, I think it was during World War II, and forgive me, I might be wrong, that Russian, the Russian country ran out of penicillin or antibiotics and they used garlic just recently found that out I thought it was interesting so we have an onion again we're not trying to cut this perfect just gonna slice it up enough for it to cook easy and then we're gonna take care of it close to the end. There we go. The garlic peel off. Grab onion. And we have garlic and ginger. This, as normal, is my homemade vegetable broth. Now, guys, with the heating costs this winter being high, what I did is I made my broth on a day. I live in uh, the south, so it doesn't get real cold, but we did get to 28 degrees. Let me show y'all what this looks like. We did get to 28 degrees. And so that's when I cooked and canned my vegetable broth and got all the free heat in the house, uh, which saved quite a bit of money. I want some carrots in here, and I forgot to go to the store and get carrots. And I remember, bird's eye has quite a bit of carrots in it. So I'm gonna just take some frozen carrots. When you're uh, cooking, Guys, don't be afraid to improvise. Learn how to do it the way that you like it. There we go. We got carrots. Now, I could have went to the store, and that would have been fun to get my carrots. I'm going to get a few more carrots out of here. The problem is, it would have cost me four bucks. By the time I'd have bought the carrots, by the time I'd have bought these little carrots, Paid for the gas, and if you had the time, it'd have been more than that. Instead, 
I just walked to the freezer, grab a few free uh, carrots out of my uh, California blend. Good to go. Now, if you remember the first video, I just cleaned this. It's still not clean. Okay, so we're gonna let this simmer and cook and then be back with you in a little bit. I just had a freeze and pulled my tomatoes out as they died. And here's my carrots, what you're about to see. The reason I got them out the freezer, they're not ready yet. Cute though. Well, we got some onion tops that I'm just gonna pinch off right here and use for our food. The pepper is totally optional. I have them, I like them, and so I'm gonna add one. And, and if guys, if you notice anything about the way I cook, when I have it in the garden, if, I, if at all possible, I try to add it to my food. Now, I'm not trying to cut this real good. And the reason I do it is my thought process is the more nutrition I get in the food, the better it is for me. I read a cycling book oh, probably five, six years ago. And one of the things they talked about is that you're, if you don't feed your cells, one of the things they talked about is you can eat, be eating a lot of food and be nutritionally deficit, deficit and your cells are screaming for food. And therefore, your body is not going to be able to put out a lot of energy. Well, the mind's a muscle. Body's a muscle. So the more nutrition that I get in my body, I find the less hungry I am and the better I do. Since I have these carrots, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these carrot tops. Not a lot, just a little. Um, and I'm gonna put it in my soup. Now th this is not something I really recommend you doing. But again, going with the theory about nutrition, this is directly from the garden. That soil where I took these carrots is really rich. I've been working on it a couple of years. And not only that, I mean, when I say working on it for a couple of years, I've been adding leaves, compost, shavings, a lot of things to get the soil rich. And so it's pretty rich soil. Here's my little baby carrot. You know me. That is a good carrot. Let's see what these little leaves taste like. They're tender. We got our little carrot tops we're putting in. Now we're starting to get some color in there. A lot of people saute, and you can saute in vegetable broth. Uh, some people recommend oil. I don't because most of what I read, read about cooking oils and different, and different type of oils, it's not the healthiest for you. So I avoid oils if possible. And uh, I find I can cook just about everything without oil. That's smell good. You hear the sauteing going on. Now, we're just about out of water, so we're gonna go ahead and add another quart of vegetable broth. Get our, another vegetable to put in it. Now these are uh, broccoli florentines. They come from pasta. If you notice the theme in my cooking, a lot of my food comes from pasta. One pound, two pounds is gonna be a little too much, about half. Took about a half a pound out, put a little clothespin, put this back in the freezer. We're just gonna drop the broccoli in. I'm gonna let it leave the, the heat on high for about another minute. Let it bring to a boil, uh, then I'm gonna let it simmer and cook. I'm going to add the last ingredients, share with everybody how I uh, 
finish this uh, kind of it's a kind of an immune booster uh, vegetable turmeric broccoli soup we're at a ball now so we're gonna go ahead real low hear it now stir it see how thick it is it's pretty thick so I'm gonna go ahead and pour another half a quart of distilled water and we're gonna add turmeric I want to show y'all something this turmeric is from Sam's Club and it's approximately 73 cents an ounce this turmeric and it's organic this turmeric was ordered off of Amazon and it's 34 cents an ounce. That's easily under half. So you can get this cute little bottle if you want. You don't use it a lot. I happen to use it a lot. Or you can get this big two pound bag and put it in a pint canning jar and save yourself a lot of money. Under $11, $7 approximately. So about 11 bucks, $7. And this is really almost four times as much. I prefer the larger one and saving the money. That's me. I'm gonna take our turmeric. We're gonna take one uh, heaping tablespoon. I happen to like it. If you don't like it as much, don't put as much in. I knew black pepper made turmeric more effective, but to make this vlog today, I looked it up because I was curious. And what I was able to find is that turmeric, turmeric with black pepper increased absorption like 2000%, which still just blows my mind. Doesn't sound right, but that's, <laughs> that's what the article said. What I do know is Turmeric is way more effective based on the research that I've read. If you add black pepper to it, uh, I drink it a lot of times. Hot water, turmeric, black pepper, a little honey, and a little almond or coconut milk. We've been cooking a little while. I think we're ready. Take the immersion blender. I'll take a little pre-test. Make sure it came out the way I wanted it. I'm lacking salt. I'm going to add a teaspoon and just a tad. That's a tad. Guys, as you're cooking, one of the things you might want to do is taste your food. A lot of times, even if you're following the recipe that it tasted great before, and you go to cook it again, what happens is... The soil can impact the, grow the vegetables, so they can be stronger, they can be weaker, and of course that's going to impact the flavor of your food. So I try to taste my food as I cook. Now I'm going to show y'all my mess. This is why I taste. I've tasted the soup, which I'm going to do again right now, so you can tell. And one of the things it has, let me, do, let me taste it. Hold on, I'll be right back. It's got a little bit of a bitter taste. It's not bad, it's just a little bitter. What I'm going to do, put three tablespoons, just three, at this point, of tomato sauce. And what I did is I, I put some of the soup uh, with a couple of crackers and it still had that bitter taste, and then I, I dropped four drops of tomato sauce, and it went away. That's what we're gonna do with the soup. Cook, play, have fun. As, as, as you learn, and I'm speaking from experience for, for me, what happens is you'll cook something, and for whatever reason, it doesn't come out the way you want it, and then you'll start learning how to add a little something in there and it completely changes the flavor profile. I'm not gonna tell you what it is until <laughs> after you try it. It tastes like a roux. <laughs> you made some more roux? No, it's not. Mm. 
You like it or don't yeah, like it? Yeah, it's good. Is it different? Yeah. You know what it is? Some about dehydrated vegetables? No. No, then I have no idea. It is a turmeric broccoli immune booster soup that I come <laughs> up with. It's good.